Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Recently, SBC was signed up by Matejko Heyman, Ecomita Company, the owner of Ripple. The cryptocurrency's dogged army of holders celebrated what they saw as a victory for XRP, but they quickly sought to diminish the celebration in this editorial. It is entirely coincidental. There are no coincidences, as you are aware. A few days prior to Barry Silbert's announcement that he was selling the selling coin desk to optimistic investors, there was this hit piece. Very well. Who wants to be bullish? I remember asking this guy when I was bullish. Farley, Tom? For the simple reason that Bitcoin is not considered a security by anybody, including authorities. The industry would benefit greatly if Bitcoin itself could advance at a faster rate. Reason being, financial resources. Plunge into the market with Bitcoin at TF because it's so easy to purchase and so many people have faith in it. Bitcoin will eventually arrive. Bitcoin was a brilliant idea. The fact remains. The value it contains is preserved. How unstable it is, I get it. Rather than an invention, some are referring to it as a discovery because of its value as a store of value. It was unmoving and constant. Yes, I'm sure you've spent days educating yourself on Bitcoin. Additionally, there are investors and proponents of the digital asset who think it was crucial to listen to Tom Farley, he oversaw the New York Stock Exchange as its president in the past. Now we can bring everything to a close. What are our alternatives? Ice Ice G, iterated back to all of these people, including KNBC's Tom Farley, and supported our Bitcoin-centric project. Tom Farley is a former president of the New York Stock Exchange. Is not limited to see isn't going to cross the finish line. No investigative questions would ever be asked of Jay Clayton by KNBC. Jay Clayton was recruited as a contributor and left the SEC without ever questioning why he sued Ripple at that time. This whole bunch is a member of the same club. Tom Farley and his bullish company purchase a coin desk after they vote my argument. Just a few days after that, they're covering Ripple and XRP in a negative light. Suddenly, he appears. Just so you know, this man is Colin Brown. He also tweeted about this. He asserts that with the approval of one Bitcoin ETF, the XRP ETF will also be approved, driving up the price of XRP to $50 per unit. Where did he get that? It's good. It sounds good to me. All right, here's the backstory, you've got these Wall Street types on the same team. Remember to pay attention to the back. Keep in mind that this is the second cryptocurrency firm to go public, so far. This just went public with a space, so keep that in mind. I think the total was $50 for all of them, no one on the inside. I'm uncertain. However, I'm assuming that everyone made a profit and the price fell below $1. The parent corporation of the New York Stock Exchange owns backed, but I've always had the impression that they were merely sitting around preparing this firm for what they know is coming. Ice alright, the Ice guy's name is Jeffrey Sprecher. Gary Gensler has been on his calendar for quite some time for meetings. Indeed, I have proven. Credit. What else is there to say about the custodian and back VIP? The piece we showed you earlier was about how XRP won't always be held magically and stuff. I mean, come on, we only have fire blocks. After dropping the case, Jay Clayton went there. Jay Clayton keeps his fire blocks in that spot on the plate. That concludes it. Bitcoin news follows. Digital asset investor allegedly ready to push Bitcoin price to $50,000 this year and $120,000 by end of 2024, according to Standard Chartered. Allow me to delve deeper into the spy now. The aroma is wafting over here. All the stage savvy in the world is pouring into me through this, I will conclude my remarks on the matter. Now you have a spy agency that has teamed up with a group that See, the circle is what you mentioned. Remember that DC operates on the Stellar Network? It was created by Jed McCaleb, the same Jed McCaleb who started Ripple and supposedly had a breakup with Ripple, 
the same Jed McCaleb who was conspicuously absent from any mention of his XRP sales. Despite the repercussions of the SEC's lawsuit, he is now synonymous with quickness. In each instance, the circle is followed by this. A more expedited, user-friendly, and accessible monetary system, and you remain steadfast. Additionally, we have discussed how easy it will be to transfer funds. Therefore, Stellar and Fantastic Ecology both benefit from the Circle Alliance's collaborative efforts. It is a stable, dependable, and regulated coin. The USG has already finished managing its treasury in support of the stable coin. Very cautiously. Key Teva, in my opinion, unlocks this that sees the big picture, anyone, anywhere in the globe, can use any MoneyGram agent to genuinely get into ISDS on Stellar, in order to facilitate so many different applications, liquidity is essential. Additionally, no other company is a better fit to work with and utilize Tietze in the context of a digital currency. A more accessible, user-friendly, and speedier financial system is something we aim to create. The backbone and facilitator is you, and you're stuck. My attention was diverted while I was glancing at an app on my phone. Nevertheless, Reese XRP is next. Just wondering if there's any connection. Is there anybody here who uses Circle Pay or Circle Invest? Joining Jeremy Lair from Circle R on stage is David Schwartz, who we last saw a few years ago. We have a few. What about XRP then? Is there any recognition for that? On the exact same number, very close by. Just wondering if there's any connection. Your wonder bits are connected. No, I think words do have meaning. If you're interested in low-value remittances or central bank netting, you'll find yourself in a whole other universe. Interstitial space, though, is another story. Traditional instruments, such as Nostro Vostro accounts, which are a way for two trading partners to balance and net their funds, are a part of most exchanges' overall costs. On the other hand, another option is available right now, particularly in this age of microcommerce, i.e., transactions where each participant spends less than $100. When things are moved. But you'll need to figure out a way to avoid the cold tariffs, bureaucracy, and custody issues that accompany supply chain and transactions. Concerning regulatory and compliance issues, there is a great deal. From a vertical perspective, if I need to send money to Mexico, I will pay 5% on the funds, whether they are sent in cash or not. Even then, only around 20% of that goes into the Forex market. Without a local account in the currency of your counterparty, Forex is now inevitable on both ends. But AD is still with you. Which is merely an obstacle to automating a process. The viewpoints, especially of groups like Ripple and Brilliant, seem to me to be very different. High-value and low-value transactions exist. However, my understanding is that there is some debate about whether or not these processes can be fully mechanized while maintaining full compliance. Consequently, we need to find ways to reduce this impact and boost international trade and capital exchange immediately. Remittances are how come we can't find a way to make that process easier? Alright, after that, we need to examine this. Has the sudden closure of 64 bank branches in the United States an impact on you? Anyhow, it's hardly surprising that banks would start shuttering some of them. Additionally, there is this significant depreciation that has occurred, and we are at an inflection point, so pay attention, poker face. In the two years after our visit, the majority of the dumping has been in the opposite direction. As a result, rates were going up, and investors were fleeing the market. Alternately, crypto faced difficulties and problems before regulatory reforms. Plus a few more items. Things are about to change, in my opinion, because we have reached a tipping point. A lot of our internal problems have been resolved or are being dealt with. In my opinion, we have a good grasp of regulation outside of the US. As a result, everyone involved, investors, baths, and service providers, now feels much safer, more confident, and more trusted. At long last, it seems like quantitative tightening is winding down. Tightening is ending, but I don't anticipate relaxing anytime soon. 
Therefore, new capital, especially institutional capital, is entering the market, and then Clay returns us to IC. I think the good people of the world and the US need to face some realities, and today my member group, XRP.com, is going to discuss this. Truth has always been revealed to you by your gut, and it has always been right. Whatever the case may be, you have been led astray by your intuition regarding many matters that will inevitably come up, and we must face some of these truths head on. Plus, some people might find them disturbing. But the truth isn't funny, you know? You can see it clearly. My issue is another subject we will discuss. A long time ago, I had a theory that I never shared with anyone. An idea in cryptography. However, I have a long-standing theory that I am convinced is extremely plain to see that the government has orchestrated a number of the crypto world's recent events. They have been carefully orchestrated to give the impression that they are something they are not in order to gain control of the crypto market. From what I can tell, they put on quite a show. I'll talk about another one, but I won't be able to prove it. My theory, though. Also, I'll show you one. Those digital assets are mine to invest in. Money advisors are not my specialty. This is only meant to be enjoyed for fun. Please like the video and subscribe as always. See you later, bye.